Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Alexandria for meeting for the first time. And for those of you guys that are old friends and family, welcome back. So this afternoon, we have a pick a card reading. It is what you need to hear right now slash messages from your spirit guide. Definitely feeling this energy lately today. So this is pile number one, this crystal right here. This is message number two, this crystal right here, clear quartz. This is message number three, black tourmaline. So take your time with each of these card pulls or each of these options. Don't force it. And I will meet you at your timestamp. Okay, my loves, if you chose this crystal, this is your message. I'm going to shuffle the tarot and see what intuitively I can download for this group, this reading, this message. I mean, that felt really chaotic. I don't know if you guys saw that. Well, interesting because the high priestess is jumping out. So I'm going to respect the fact that she wants to be here. Ooh, did you see that? Three of Cups. Hmm, okay. First things first with the Three of Cups jumping out, even reverse, I'm hearing the word um, connection. And with the word connection, I'm actually getting a sense of... I'm actually hearing the opposite, divine misconnection, which I don't know if misconnection is a word, but I see this as spirit wanting to talk to you about like complications when it comes to connections and relationships. For some of you guys, this will be specifically connected to relationships with people that are here. For example, like a friend, a romantic partner, whether they're here now or something that you are manifesting or something that has already manifested and it's away from you, it doesn't matter. There's this, this um, energy about, I'm hearing like in all things, like I'm hearing in everything, in everything in all things, there's a divine purpose, a divine alignment, even misconnection, even when you haven't come together or there's separation or there's disconnection there's something here about being apart I also get a strong sense that this is a very specific message for someone who has been trying to reconnect with spirit or reconnect with their higher selves with their intuition with their spirit guides with the divine there's a desire to reconnect some of you guys might feel like you're actually walking the path alone you might be someone who is very intuitively gifted and, and lately it almost feel like it feels like your senses are dulled. As I'm saying that, I'm getting this strong sense of this urge to tell you that that's actually a part of the path, that that's the way, the way, believe it or not, as an intuitive, as an empath, as a sensitive, as a gifted person, there will be moments and times where you, you feel like you lost your gift or you feel disconnected from the divine and they want to talk about that specifically they want to lean into that a little more the tower card yeah there's it's because um i i definitely feel like a major shift and sometimes i feel like a major shift in your life and sometimes um okay spirits talking about like if you knew about what was going to come down the pipeline like if you had a hint of a secret you would change your path in order to get there faster six of wands yeah this is feeling of you being capable instead of being real re, um reliant yeah so you have the full card here you have the devil card so this is okay whoa okay <laughs> wow Okay, I just got this huge uh, epiphany here as I'm reading your cards through the message of your spirit guide here coming through saying that it's one thing to have these intuitive gifts and to be led 
buy them. It's another thing to have the intuitive gifts and then almost want to control the situation because you know what's going to happen. And in this situation, you're being asked to, in some, in some sense, kind of be surprised by the universe, by the divine, or some of you guys might be taking your relationship with another person or your spirit guides for taking advantage of the situation, meaning that you stopped trying to grow in that relationship, you've settled, or you stopped trying to discover and ask questions, you're making assumptions. There's a need to go back to the start and actually feel the disconnection so that you can minimally have the desire to reconnect once again. I'm getting a very specific message about someone who has um, depression, had or has depression, but it felt like the depression kind of lifted, it dissipated, and when in reality, your depression or your moods or something that happens in the like, in you that makes you feel uncomfortable, that was actually what brought you to the feet of the divine or it was the uncomfortability that brought you to ask for something more, to have faith, to be helpless in the situation and to surrender to the situation. So the disconnection that is that you're feeling right now is, is spirit's way of showing you that it's time for you to go back to square one I'm getting a really strong sense here. If you chose this pile, there's a fresh beginning for you here. It may not be a totally new clean slate. It may be you looking at something with fresh eyes, a new perspective. There's also something about the devil card here about um, like, Like something, something that you know, like something that is familiar to you, but you aren't seeing it in it with, uh, with, I don't know why they keep saying respectful eyes. Like you're, you're taking, not, a, oh gosh, I feel bad saying this. Like you're not taking advantage of this situation intentionally, but you're not, you're being inspired right now to rediscover it, to ask questions, to reconnect with it instead of assuming I'm also getting a, a message here too that your spirit guides want to tell you that you might be settling in your gifts and that you may have stopped trying to grow or stop pursuing growth or knowledge or wisdom or going to your altar. Some of you guys might have neglected your altar. I see this as a direct result of life lifing where you have responsibilities, you have things that were distracting you, whatever those things are. The, the problem is, is that you you might have stayed in that space for too long and it's time for you to try again. Yeah, look at this. Ace of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune reversed. So there's a message here about newness, a fresh chapter. and But more importantly, for that to happen, you first have to be open to it. Some of you guys literally stop looking, Two of Wands. This is what I'm saying. You stop looking. You stop looking for, whoa, I just heard the word Adam, Adam, A-D-A-M, Adam. Wow, um, with that I'm heard, I heard like taking accountability. I don't know why, I don't know if those two names, like that, that name and that sentence is connected, but um, some of you guys might need to take a little bit more accountability for the energy that you bring or the energy that has contributed to this place that, is, that you're in right now. I'm also hearing lethargy, lethargy being lethargic. I don't see four of cups here or five of cups I, or ace of wands reversed. Those cards would signify to me burnout, but I just think like, I feel like there's something here new that specifically that wants to open up and enter into your life. I heard the word genuine, but I feel like there's a, there's something here that you need to face a little bit 
like a, a, a truth, like some, some of, something similar to a truth. I think I might do an extended reading on this. Well, let me look into the truth. Wow, Page of Pentacles and the Hermit card, yeah. This is really about, this goes a little deeper. This might have to do with um, connecting to depression or like, and it's also reminding me of lethargy, like the, the word lethargy, where lethargy, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, when you, when your energy starts to go down and you honor it, and then you start to worry, you know what I mean? And then you start to do make action steps on it. And then sometimes people just kind of settle into it. Spirit wants to say that there's something here that I feel like there's a new gift or a new, a new something. And by gift, I mean intuitive gift or something about awakening an intuitive gift and, or intuition or spirit. Like, the altar, something that you're doing to your altar, waking that energy. I'm also seeing this could signal signal for a smaller portion of the group, the next blessing that's coming your way that you may have inadvertently, accidentally kind of turned your back towards it. And because you, you might not even know what this thing is. You might not even have the in intuitive knowledge right now to even ask for it. That's also why I feel like spirit is asking you to open, open your eyes, open your heart, open your mind, open your perspective to not assuming that you know what's to come next in your life. And this isn't a curse. This isn't a bad thing. This isn't something to be worried about. It's something to remember that even with your intuition, you don't know and you can't see all. And that spirit, the universe, the angels, the guides, your ancestors, they're always going to come through with, oh my goodness, I just heard the word repulsed. Wow. Why repulsed? That's very specific. Very specific word. They're bringing the energy of repulsion. Empress, Page of Cups, the lovers. Wow. This has a lot to do with um, your receptivity and your, I just heard your process like your your process meaning like what you what you go through in order to receive whoa what you allow yourself to receive what you i'm also hearing that for some of you guys you're ask you're not asking for enough whoa 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 whoa, whoa. it's like um it's like you're choosing one thing like this group if you chose this you might be trying to manifest the same thing over and over and over and over and over again for example it could be relationship peace a relationship it could be money it could be like it's like the same plot you keep wait okay if you go back and you think about the times you went to your altar or you prayed was it the same thing again and again there's something here about diversity and expanding, but you're you're kind of stuck on one thing and it's something that's familiar to you when they're asking you to kind of open up and go beyond. And I feel that with the word repulsed, I don't see this as, um, I mean, that's a very extreme word. I've never heard any of the guides ever use that word before, actually ever in my life, but it's a very extreme word, but I feel like it's more of a signal of how much they wish to change this, but you might be depressed or this energy of depression when it comes to your spirituality. Maybe it's not that you're feeling depressed. Maybe your energy is low or your vibration is low, even with your intuition and your gifts, because there needs your approach to your altar needs to shift your approach to your magic your intuition needs to shift or what you're asking for needs to shift i am going to do an extended reading on this um i'll link it down below but for now let's go ahead and look into your oracle cards the question that we're going to be focusing on though in the extended is what needs to shift what does that need to look like what's coming in what is that what is that okay let's look at the cards so we have loneliness. When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling. See, settle. Settling for less than you deserve. And sometimes this isn't loneliness. To me, this is showing this like, and it's funny too, because spirit's kind of saying that it might not necessarily be depression. 
depression could actually be a symptom of the fact that your energy is in a lower vibration. Not that you're negative, but it's almost like repressed. Your your intuition, your intuition, or something that the vibe, the energy here is repressed, and you're almost are not open to growing. You're not open to new opportunities. So that's what your guides are asking you to do is essentially to open up. I'm also hearing that for some of you guys, you need to change your frequency. You might be going back to the same frequency and not evolving past that. And for some of you guys, you think immediately when I say evolve past to go up a higher frequency, sometimes it actually means to go to a lower frequency because they're not they don't get measured in that way. So sometimes it's not about going to the crown, you know, up to the crown. Sometimes it's about going to the sacral, the solar plexus, the root or the heart in order, in order to address or change the energy of those places and ask for divine guidance and alignment because you have Page of Cups, the Empress, the Lover's card. Also, this is signaling about connection here. Worst case scenario, you might be choosing to partner with or continue to attract partners or relationships are aligned with things that are low of vibration and you're battling through that um and it's weird because i get this sense of like you feeling like i'm okay and like spirits like yeah that's the problem like we don't just want you to be okay we want you to have a shift we want you to i keep hearing the word repulsed i don't know why okay May I embrace and love my solitude, and that's when kindred spirits can finally come, is the card that is here. Next card we have, calmness. The inner divine is the witness of all, remaining still and quiet, even during intense turbulence. Okay, so spirits stopping me again, and they say there's a difference between things being still and things being stagnant. There's a difference between energy being still and energy being stagnant. Know the difference. Know the difference. That was a tweetable moment right there. So take a deep breath and then say, quiet my mind, dear Lord. May your peaceful calm take over. Next card, we have patience. If you've tried forever to shift a problem, then probably some there's probably something to learn from embracing it. May I let this be for now. Help me relax and trust every need will be met. Often change soon follows. It's interesting because I see like you're being, oh goodness, you guys are going to hate me for this one, <laughs> but this is what spirit's showing. You may feel like you're being patient with the divine or with your angels and your guides, but their perspective is that they're being patient with you and kind with you because they're waiting for you to be open when you're waiting to be blessed in this area, when they're almost repulsed by the repetitive nature of what it is that you're asking at your altar. Wow. Or some of you guys, you might have a spirit guide here that's offended by what it is that you're bringing to your altar. I just, I really want to say that. I've done that before where I had my, I was using one altar. That's why I have multiple altars. Um, and I don't use them all for the same thing. Like I have one altar that I use for the public. And when I'm working my oils, when I'm making candles, etc., etc. And then I have, well, I have two altars. And then I have others. I'm not going to number them. But I have other altars that I use specifically for me. And if I, the reason why is because if you crowd up one altar with too many different things, they can be offended. So someone might need to clear out their altar here. Okay, karma is on your side. Let me read this to you. If you could read all the minds that I read, hear all the prayers that I hear, and beat all the hearts that I beat, I wonder if you'd even believe how often you're thought of, talked about, and fallen in love with. It's payback time. Andale, andale, the universe. So with karma here, karma is on your side and the wheel of fortune reversed. I feel like for some of some of you, you, you feel like you've had bad luck or you're just kind of settling into your luck when there's an evolution here and growth that needs to happen. That's why it's important for you to open up. To open up, ask questions of, of your angels and your guides and spirit and ask them what's next. Okay, if if uh, no two flowers are the same and yet all are beautiful in their own way. This seems very specific uh, about comparison. I also feel like this might be a sign too about what it is that you're putting on your altar. There, 
might be you need to refresh it or bring higher quality you might spirit might know that you're giving like leftover situations and that's not really an offering at that point it's more like what's more convenient for you and they just but then you're expecting so much well but this group is really they're going in okay you're being watched by loving eyes <laughs> I don't mean to be creepy, but I just feel like this is, I just genuinely get a sense that they're watching. Not in a weird way, but I don't know why, but I even get with this patience card here. Like you feel like you're being patient with spirit, but they're being patient with you because they're, they might be sending you signs and signals and they're not, if you feel like you're not spiritually progressing or if things are not progressing in your life, this, this is why. Even if you're not someone who tends to an altar, even your prayer, you might be not asking too much of the divine or asking too much from the universe. You might not be asking the right question and you keep asking the same question or keep asking for the same thing and it got silent and that's why you feel disconnected because you're not open to ask for, well, what should I be asking for? We're trying to come in and guide you. I just wanna to say to you, that the Page of Cups, the Empress, and the Lover's card is very much divinely led is what is it I'm hearing. This is you being open, the Empress energy, to receiving Page of Cups and the Empress. This supreme divine connection and alignment, the Lover's card here. Wow. Yep. Spider spirit, make your dreams real. This is what we are co- Whoa. Okay. They, they just said, this is what we're trying to co-create. We want to co-create. That means we should be working together as a team. So there might be some jumbled energy even at your altar with your prayers. Where you might be... Some of you guys might actually be praying or setting intention for something and being divinely led to somewhere else. And there's this push-pull going back and forth. We definitely are going to do an extended. And I'm going to ask for further insight into what and why and how. Having said that though, I'm gonna finish up this reading by reading this card for you. This crystal, I don't, I haven't seen it. Or if I have, I don't remember. Let me get the book so I can read it to you. Wow, integrity, solidarity, impeccability, reliability, and consistency. Wow, okay, it says, although we are always evolving, we all possess deeply had values that do not have to, we do not have to compromise. Your personal integrity matters. So if you're feeling pressure to say yes when your heart says no, see guys, this is what I'm saying, or to be something you're not, listen to the message that this crystal brings you now. Now is a time to remember the importance of being reliable and impeccable with your word. If you really wanted to say no, don't say yes for now and try to correct your mistake later. People may struggle to accept your truth and your decisions, but stick to them. Be solid and consistent because what matters to you deep down matters to the universe who loves you. If you're feeling unsure, doubting whether you have a right to take a stand, become still and reconnect with the universe through this crystal. It's not your job to protect everyone's feelings and keep the peace at all costs. You don't have to rush about smoothing everything over. Be at peace as you stand firm and your deepest values are in sync with your purpose and the universe wants you to feel and be strong right now so there's this feeling of like not misalignment but like like a struggle to connect a, 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 a authentic eh, you know where your energies are not or maybe this is like a, a something that you don't you're not you might be so numb or in that repressed state that you might not even be able to you might not be able to have even been able to see it because you're stagnant. There hasn't been a change. There hasn't been a shift, but you kind of knew that there was something and you'll know because this reading will resonate. All right. So let me go ahead and carry forward. Um, for those of you guys that will not be joining me in the extended reading, we'll, we'll be diving into, okay, what is this? What exactly does this mean? Where are we going? What advice can they give? and to elaborate further on the situation and what is meant to come in. Um, thank you. 
I leave you here now. Please give this video a thumbs up just to show your support. And I'm gonna go ahead and dive into pile number two, but technically I'm really diving into the extended reading. All right, my love, if you chose the clear quartz card, this is your message. I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle the tarot and see if there's any intuitive messages that are coming through. I do want to say that my candle is starting to give off um, like a dark, dark uh, smoke. Not this one. I have a higher wisdom candle burning on this side. You can't see it. This is signaling um, negative energy in this pile. I'm getting a, a sense of, um, I just actually heard the word like smut. That sounds weird, but I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. But something that is like, like sooty. Smut's probably not the right word, but that's what I heard. <laughs> Temperance. I'm getting an image of someone getting pulled back in order to be pulled forward. It's really, really interesting because I feel like, I feel this really strong sense to say that spirit doesn't want to talk about the negativity at all in this reading, that the fact that the smoke is coming off is a signal enough. They don't even really want to address it. They want to focus on clarity, like keeping things clear. Uh, I just heard for the sake of dot, dot, dot. So I don't know if that's someone specific. I feel like there's some things that don't need to be said. When you know it, you know. You know when something's like foul. You know when something's not good for you. You know when you, when something is painful. There's, I'm just hearing there's no need to kind of like recap or like re revisit. Um, it's also interesting too that you got the clear quartz. And this is all, obviously this is a sign of clarity and keeping the energy as clean and pristine as possible. It's wild though, because the first card to jump out for you was actually the temperance card. And this is a woman who is rising up out of some very murky waters, untouched, unfiltered. And that's, I feel, what your angels and your guides are trying to get for you or trying that that's something that they want you to lean into or they want you to embody, they want you to pay attention to. Some of you guys actually might have uh, confusion in your headspace. Um, I think too, I'm hearing like a medication, there might be an imbalance with a medication or something that you're taking or a food that you're taking or in the environment. This is like someone having asthma and they're in an environment that triggers an asthma attack Ace of Wands, Knight of Pentacles. What do you want to talk about, Spirit? Because you really have me. I'm seeing someone talking about like noodles. That's so random too. We have the Moon card and the Queen of Cups, exactly. So this is the energy that, is, that I'm, I have been picking up on. And from the start of this reading, it's this like cloudiness, this fogginess, this imbalance, secrets, deception, kind of keeping things hidden, keeping things away not addressing things, not calling things forward. Okay, you're okay, if you chose this pile, your angels and your guides are asking, oh, I didn't even realize you have nine of swords, eight of swords here. Because I was so stuck on, I'm like staring at the temperance card and the fact that she's coming out of this muddy water or ruddy water, pure. So if you chose this reading, I don't know what it is that you might be going through or what your energy, what is around your energy right now. Yeah, Ace of Swords showing up at the bottom of the deck. There's a need to get, there's a need to focus on clarity. Um, I'm also hearing regaining strength. Someone here might be smoking too much, like weed or something. Something that's kind of dimming, dimming your, 
your ability to like focus or concentrate. Can you give me advice for them, please? Yeah, four of swords. Reversed. Knight of swords. There's so many cards here talking about clarity. Trying to regain clarity. Things being muddled or chaotic or like static, like static, static energy. Where is this coming from? Yep, Four of Cups. Yeah, guys, I can't get away from it. The Tarot just keeps bringing it up. Um, so where do you want to take this reading then? Because I don't know where to go now here that this is what we're talking about. They're actually saying, let's go look at the Oracle cards. This is the first time for that. All right. They said that there's going to be like a key or a cue, like a clue. And, and I'm going to read this one last. Okay, first things, we have hardship. Okay, wow. May I embrace what's happening right now as baffling or painful as it is. Help me, God, to trust where you are guiding me. I am yours. So do you remember how I said that there's something here that spirit doesn't necessarily want to talk about the hardship, but they acknowledge it, but there's this path towards clarity. There's this path towards healing. I feel like even this card showing up the hardship is acknowledging that there is some type of difficult, like, and everyone is going to be different. There's going to be some people who have experienced like tremendous loss. And there's others who it's almost like the opposite. There's like, uh, it kind of gives me the energy of pile number one, like the, the first group where there's like a numbing here or a numbness. Although their energy was, a, was pretty different. Let me look at the next card. Truth. Mm-hmm. So this is what's bothering me too. Wow. And this is one of the reasons, like, you guys know how I do my readings. Like, sometimes there's times where it's important for us to dive into what we're focused on because there's value in understanding. It's interesting to me that in the, if you chose this pile, spirit doesn't want to do that. I think that you might have had um, an, expect, an expectation or something that you... Like, okay, just, I'm going to get clarity on the situation. And Spirit's almost asking you to not look for clarity or ask for clarity, but to understand that we're moving beyond this or some things just aren't, you're not able to understand them. You'll never be able to understand it. Like sometimes terrible things happen or sometimes people are weird or sometimes people, things suck. And Sometimes that is the truth. I don't know. There's something about companionship. Okay. When you fully bless and embrace your aloneness, you're ready for the, for the ones who are meant to be with you. May I welcome the solitude knowing it will open the way for all healthy relationships. I'm concerned about the energy of a muddled relationship here. You might be someone who senses that someone is lying or holding something back from you. And instead of gaining clarity on like why or what it is just know that if there's something off trying to go in and dive into the muddledness means that you're going to be further impacted by it is that worth it for you at least in the eyes of spirit they say no there's a secret that this person is holding back that they're if this is a relationship this is a secret this is a muddled situation If this is someone else's energy impacting you, I would do my best not to succumb to it. If this is something that you're doing that is muddling up your energy, I would put all of my effort into changing it so that I'm not in this cloudy, foggy, anxiety there's some things here too that it's your, I, I just want to say too, I'm getting a strong message here about like, it's not your fault. So let's say you're in a, let's say you have anxiety, depression, or muddled thoughts or thinking, or you're on medication your whole life and you don't know what it means to be without medication. There's something here that that was the way and you might need to 
you might be being led or or guided into a, 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 a new life or a new way where the environment around you isn't so muddled and it feels temporary. Dwell on what you love. Yeah, it's where you're staying. It's where you're staying. It's where you choose to stay or where... It's not as if you need anyone. Wow. See, this is... Okay. Yeah. I was kind of... I wasn't second-guessing myself, but I was kind of like, where are we going with this? And I just feel like this message is very, very clear um, for those that this is meant for. There's something here. And if this... If you can't relate to this, which I I understand, then this is not your message. Um, or maybe... you it's important for you to sit with it. Don't force it. I wouldn't try to force this. Okay. It's not as if you need anyone. There's this energy here about how someone else's stuff, how someone else's baggage, how someone else's chaos brings, if you're not careful and if you stay there, it will bring you down. There comes a point where it's in your best interest or with the situation. There comes a point where it's in your best interest to remove yourself or separate so that you can regain clarity. And spirit doesn't even want you to dive into where this is coming from or why this is the way that it is. They want you to just focus on gaining clarity for yourself. Tend to the small things, not spirit. Some of you guys might be getting small signs, like little hints of something is off or weird or eating away. If this is a relationship, this is a tiny thing that's coming into the relationship and eating away at it. It's like a small thing can turn into a big problem. Let me now shuffle the cards and see what they're saying. Some of you guys might actually be getting, this is very specific. Some of you guys might actually, if you have like a friendship circle here, you might have noticed in small things that they say that something has been off. And they might be picking, like, I, it's so funny because I just started doing it while I was talking about it. They might be picking at small things or getting conflict with some things. Instead of trying to be the, the good friend, I don't know, this is so weird for me to say this because this is something I would do. Instead of trying to be the good friend and go to them and be like, hey, what's going on? Which you can do that, but it's almost like if you ask that question, you might get your head bit off. Because it's it's there there might be some feelings of anger or frustration, but it's not because of you. But the more that you get closer, this person is not open to to hearing anything because they're going through it right now, or they might be hiding what they're going through. But you can sense that something is off. Spirit is asking you, no, don't even go there. Don't even tread water. Like, and I know for the sake of like friendship or companionship. You want to go in, you want to check, you want to help them, you want to fix it for them. I just get this strong sense that this is not your place. This is not what you should be doing. This is not like, it's even if you did try to make the best of the situation, to be present, to help them, it's almost like you get pulled down with them or they snap at you or it, it's almost like letting this, letting this go and let them sort it out because... But also on the flip side, this could be you. There might be something that you feel is off within your energy. And it's just, it's starting, it's really shit. Like people are noticing, not that it matters what people think. But it, or you might need to notice it within yourself that there's something here that you're not okay with. And instead of, um... I don't know. I feel I don't know. I get a strong sense of you cutting cutting the cord here and, and removing yourself. Let's ask for advice. Or maybe it's a situation where you feel powerless. 
like this is a this is this reading is very like I I do intend to do an extended reading but I feel like there's so many layers to this that even in the extended reading we couldn't cover it all there's like bigger there's something here too I want to say that there's like a, if there's a pebble on the top that is annoying you there's something like a whole boulder underneath that that the pebble broke off from but somehow you're fixating on the pebble I don't know another way to say that that's kind of what's going through or this is what another person is going through this might have to deal with um a masculine energy and I just heard the word impure oh god this is why I don't even necessarily want to get into this too too deep because I'm like what the heck is this um but this might have to do with masculine energy here just kind of taking advantage of a situation spirit is asking you to kind of see something for what it is and remove yourself from it let them let if like I just hear like if someone else is muddled let them be muddled like try not to dwell in that space try not to be a part of that space move forward if this is you you are going to have to really put your your big girl boots on and pull yourself up and out of the situation because like and you got to do it like i uh, guys I'm hearing um, if you're staying in a space where you know you don't deserve this instead of trying to figure out why something happened or why someone did this to you just know that shitty shit be shitting you know what I mean and it's it's sometimes it's instead of figuring it out and staying there and trying to process it and get through it there's an acceptance and just being like, I did not deserve that. And now I'm moving forward. Instead of me trying to make it make sense, I need to let it go. And by letting it go, I'm not saying that it's okay. It's almost like forgiving. It just means that I just am not going to reside in this space anymore. I'm going to get out of it. I'm going to move past it. I'm going to move beyond it. So if you chose this reading, look at the symbolism of the lotus because that's what you need to embody. That's what spirit is, your spirit guides are trying to tell you, is to embody the spirit of the lotus, that in a, city, a shitty situation, a muddled situation, a sooty, smutty situation, you are going to set the intention and you're gonna, you're gonna come out of this pure if you set the intention for that and if you choose to let this go and not dwell in this space. If you dwell in this space, then it starts to get inside and that's what we don't want. It's what you choose. So in your extended reading, I'm not going to unpack the sooty vibration here because there's no need for that. We could choose to tie to unpack it or we can choose to move forward and we can see what that looks like and see what spirit guides are leading you towards within that. That's what the extended reading is going to be about. Um, but yeah, wow. I just feel very empowered by this. Yeah, Five of Cups. This is it. This is literally confirming it, Five of Cups. And do you see how the hand is trying, trying to pull it down? What does that hand represent for you? And it's almost, it's not, I just want to say too that some of you guys might be looking for more information as far as why. And I just want to tell you that you have, you got out all that you could get out of the truth of the situation. There's no more to unpack. There's nothing more that would make you understand the situation better and why this happened. And now it's the choice to, well, how do we move forward? Like, how do I rebuild? And of course, human experience, like there are very situ situations where it doesn't make sense. Like, how could this? And I agree with you. And there's oftentimes situations that just really genuinely suck. And it's not about the lesson. It's more about the circumstance. 
the lesson though is learning how to not dwell in that space so that's what the extended reading is actually going to be about and for those of you guys i just want to say if you really are feeling this right now i am genuinely sorry like i'm genuinely sorry if this has been your struggle if this has been your experience there are times where it's just saying like oh you live you learn you know things happen and there's a lesson in all of this that sometimes truthfully speaking like people at the end of the day they have their free will or things happen and it's a result of free will and consequences and karma and fate not that it's against you sometimes you're a by like an innocent byproduct in that sometimes you're an innocent bystander in that like and that it has nothing to do with anything that you've done or part of your karma sometimes it's just very terrible circumstances and now what so that's what we're going to dive into in the extended. For those of you guys that are not joining me in the extended, thank you. And I'm sending you healing energy and recovery and purity and fresh start new beginnings. Please give this video a thumbs up to support it and show the YouTube algorithm that this is a message that's worthy of listening to. I know that it is. I feel that, but that's just how YouTube works works in the world that we live in that's just the truth the fact of the matter it's not my reality it's actually the reality of the youtube world um it does help and yeah i'll see you in my next reading now i'm going to move on to the extended or if you're moving on to pod number three i'll meet you there all right my loves if you chose this crystal black tourmaline this is your reading i do want to say that i I have a sense of excitement and even enthusiasm from this pile. What is the vibe? What is the message? So weird. I'm getting a vision of someone putting like a... Do you remember back in like Vietnam days when they were fighting the Vietnam War? And I was trying... Okay, they had the helmets that kind of looked like a turtle shell. I was trying to de determine, I'm like, what am I looking at? Like, what is the vision that, is that I'm getting right now? Is it an, a turtle? Because I kept looking at the turtle shell. And this person was kind of pulling it over their head. And I heard, then I started hearing people say, like, incoming, incoming. And it's not that it was a turtle shell. It looks like a turtle. But it's a, it's like you're, you're expecting something to come crashing into your head or crashing into your life. It's giving me... The world card you're expecting the world to come crashing down it's not funny um yeah you have the wheel of fortune here too this is expecting like expectancy this energy of expectancy yep Eight of Wands is here too. Nine of Cups, Two of Pentacles. What do your spirit guides want to tell you right now? Clarify the Moon card for me, please. Eight of Pentacles. So this has to do with your effort. Okay. Some of you guys need to hear right now that... Um, the work and the effort that is that you're putting into isn't, it's, it's not, okay. Um, it's not the reason why it's not the reason that this situation or whatever this thing is will be a success or you're putting too much value in the 
this is almost giving like um, learning that love is conditional. Like if you don't pour into it, if you don't keep adding to it, if you don't keep tending to it, then it will die. Like it'll go away. So you're almost kind of constantly striving, reaching, touching, adding, contributing. The Wheel of Fortune card here, the Ten of Pentacles, the High Priestess reverse, the Emperor reverse, the Three of Wands. This is giving This is someone feeling um, like they, they might lose something. If this is a marriage or a union, it almost feels like if I'm not doing this, then if I'm not adding to this, then we're, then this is going to close. It's this deception. It's this belief system. What, you, what your angels and your guides are trying to bring up is your belief system, like your subconscious belief system. The base of this reading is Nine of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Six of Swords reversed, that... You don't need to be paddling all the time. You don't need to be, I also just heard the word rocket power and like emphasis on the word rocket. So it's like trying to go fast or trying to move forward. It's important. I also, oh, okay, I'm hearing like, it. you know, what you have done is enough or who you are is enough or it's, or it is enough, whatever it is, it is enough. I don't, I, I want to ask for advice for you. And because the, these cards right now are showing the mindset, the mentality. They're not giving advice. They're showing the effort that is that you feel like you have to control fate, like control the outcome, control the circumstances. If I continue on adding, adding, like, and putting all this energy in, or... It, let's say this is a bank account. You feel like if you're adding money, whoa, 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 whoa. So think about a bank account, right? That's how spirit is, is calling me to kind of talk about this. Think about a bank account. If you're, if you're working so hard to add into your savings, to contribute to your savings, you feel like the harder you go, the more that you have wealth. You have to save. You have to build up. You have to accumulate. You spend your whole life building up your bank account to present prevent yourself from experiencing lack of money resources but you live your whole life with all this money in the bank and never spending it so you might have been eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches ramen noodles or taking like clipping coupons and being cheap you know and and how is that different than if you lived if you didn't have that money so the wealth was there but it never was touched this is what spirit is saying when it comes to whatever it is that is the for the the forefront of your mind, the subconscious belief. It's this need to I need to do all of this or or put out and exert and put effort. But how is what you're how is what you're doing different than your fear? It's almost like the pursuit of your fear brought you to it. It's like you're trying to control fate or trying to define fate or define, control the circumstances and how things unfold, but somehow in the controlling of it, you succumb to it. You, you bring yourself to it. I feel like spirit's been kind of leading this group to understand um, not to let go of your effort, your hard work, your intentionality, but to balance it. But I'm going to ask for advice. They really want you to know that, like, it is enough. Like, there's this message of it is enough, whatever it is. It could be you. It could be what you've done. What is the advice here? What is the message? Some of you guys feel very um, powerless, so trying to control or continuing to show up in the same way you have is because you don't want to, you just feel, I don't know, like,
some of you guys feel um, a sense of duty or obligation. And I just feel like this comes, this stems from a space of either you learned it or like in childhood or you're, you're leaning into it now, like conditional love, like conditional circumstances. Yeah. When two of cups, it's, it should be reciprocated. It should be easy, effortless and without strings attached. And I say love, but this could be anything. I just heard um, for you to focus on you um, and like really nourish yourself. Can you do things every day? For some of you guys, I see like a calendar book where it's important for you to take breaks or take time off or separate or disconnect. I'm hearing like regaining balance or I'm hearing like get off the path. Some of you guys have been walking down this path. Let's say you're hiking. You're walking down this path for like three days and you just say, in order for me to get through the, the woods, I have to keep walking. And it's true, you do have to keep walking, but you don't have to do it all in one day. Some of you guys feel like, I can't, I can't do this, like, or I, if, if I, this can't be done because I'm not doing enough. But the truth is it's not realistically possible. Like the, the standard, the expectation that you have for yourself is so high. So be kinder to yourself so that you can see exactly what it is that you are, are asking of yourself or expecting of the situation. Let's say you desire greatness for yourself. I just want to say that you either are or you are, aren't great. I don't like some people just really want to be number one on top. Like it's like starting a sport for the joy of the sport and then killing yourself about it when you're at the Olympics. Is it okay to not be number one or in the pursuit of number one, like what parts of you do you sacrifice? Like what parts of the quality of your life do you sacrifice in the pursuit of being on top? For some of you guys, if this is a relationship, it, the, the relationship for you will like, not that it won't be enough, but you, you, you don't appreciate it. Like you're, you don't, or you don't relax in it. If this is a healing journey, this is someone who's spending so much time doing the healing work that they need to take a break from the work because the work the healing, now they have to heal from trying to heal. Do you know what I mean? It's just kind of turning something. Yeah, this is pushing something too hard. This group, you're pushing yourself too hard. You're pushing yourself too hard. What are the expectations and the standards that, that you set for yourself? Are they realistic? I'm hearing people like kind of comparing to like Beyonce. Like if Beyonce can do it, like Beyonce has the same 24 hours in a day. Don't do that to yourself. First of all, you don't know Beyonce's reality. And second of all, you should never, I should have even started off saying this, Beyonce is a human being. No one should be glorifying any human being. I don't care how successful they quote unquote are. We don't know their what their reality or situation. And don't, don't compare yourself. You don't know what things look like behind the scenes. You don't know what led into it. You don't know what is contributing to it. You just know what you... The illusion of what you believe it to be in this case i will say you're pushing yourself too hard some of you guys um have found that your worth and your value is through your accomplishments or your service and it's important now for you to redefine your value or your substance or to disconnect to begin to disconnect from the people or situations or circumstances that look for you in only this one role 
I'm also hearing it starts with you first, with what you agree to do, with what you agree to take on. What I'm also hearing, what do you have to prove? Who are you proving this to? Some of you are afraid to look, afraid to set things down, af afraid to, if not afraid, then resistant to. I think a part of you is afraid of the future and you don't know what that looks like. So it's hard for you to, sh to reach for it or to come to terms with it. It's almost like it's acceptable for everyone else, but it's not for you, like it's not acceptable for you. Yeah. The Tower card, the Eight of Wands, this is your energy. This is kind of giving the signal of like a crash and burn or like a quick departure, like a, a quick epiphany. I want to say too that it's it's important like teamwork is very beautiful don't get me wrong two of cups here six of cups but it's almost like don't let it, the teamwork and the energy come in when you can't walk anymore so think about how someone think about someone who is running the race in the woods and they're running and they're running and they're running and they say I gotta get to the finish line I have to get to the finish line if I don't get to the finish line all this would have been for nothing and they push themselves and yes they hit a new record they hit a new whatever but they almost, when, right when they get to the finish line, it's to the point where people have to carry them over the finish line. And it's like, yeah, you did it. And yes, okay, we can all clap. Oh my God, look how they exerted themselves. They almost died. Wow. Spirit is like, what? I'm almost hearing like, what was the point in that? Like, why, why was that something that you needed to accomplish? I feel like this pile, you are redefining the conditions. I don't know what that means, but you're redefining the conditions, the conditions in which you push yourself, the conditions, the limits, and what it's costing you. And all of this is, is bringing you into a space, and it might be difficult first, of going back to a very optimistic future for yourself which is such an interesting pivot because for some of you guys your optimism and your positivity and your expectancy and your hope and your for greatness and how you contribute and what you do was so high and in the pursuit of that it's almost like you you become exhausted or you become worn down or you have more things around you that are more accustomed to what how much you give instead of just appreciating you for who you are that it started to dwindle down like that natural optimistic side of you it still lives within you but it and it ended up anything off balance turns into a negative situation like it turns into a, a toxic situation so it's almost like your positivity, your optimism, and your expectancy for the future has been fueling you, but it got to the point where now your optimism is going to shift into this hope for the future and how bright things can be and doing things or moving from a space of I want to do this instead of feeling like I feel a sense of obligation and duty. And then also understanding that sometimes your want to do things or to show up is because you don't know anything else. You don't know better. Yeah. Some people, Nine of Cups, Queen of Swords, they they feel like a sense of obli like obligation to you or like they feel a sense of entitlement. Like I'm, I, she's obligated to do this. And they don't, I don't know how they're going to feel or fare when you incorporate like a healthier boundary or c cross a line or just say like, I am not your friend, especially when they don't get in return what they're expecting from you or what they've heard you give to other people. This is so, so specific. Um, they're going to feel like, oh, well, she's cutting me off. They might be offended by this because they feel a sense of, well, why wouldn't you give it to me? It's like, well, 
why did you the question honestly in my first mind is like why did you expect me to yeah wow the advice here eight of pentacles and queen of cups this is to focus on what you love and to watch how other people how other people look at you that will reflect if this is someone that you should be giving anything to it's also focusing on you taking your time in what you've done i'm also seeing this not even like what your work or your effort but i'm seeing this in what you've learned because there's something here about your growth your evolution and what you've learned in all of this that that is real value like that is genuine value because sometimes Think about Eight of Pentacles, right? It's the things that we commit ourselves to, to mastering. You didn't just step into this earth mastering the art of house building. You might have had, you might have been born on this earth with a, a natural gift to build and like tactile, like being with, moving with your hands and like natural strength. And then from that, you might have had some opportunities that taught you how to build better but there's something here about the journey and the experience that you live, that you learn by living through it. So Spirit is asking this pile to, among many things here, but one of the main things is to look at how much you've learned and apply that now to life and become more optimistic from the future with all that you've learned, you've mastered, you evolved, you leveled up because you also have the world card here. And apply that energy to the brightness of your future. Yeah, the hermit card, five of cups. I wanna tell you that your angels and your guides are kind of not telling you that this is gonna be the easiest journey for you to uplift yourself now. It will feel like you starting this new path and applying this lesson in your current situation might be something that feels uncomfortable first. Like you might feel like you're not doing enough or you might have fear or anxiety, especially if that means that you might lose some things or some people who benefited from you giving so much of yourself. So when you start seeing that, when you start doing the right thing for yourself and there's more balance and these people are willing to walk away from you because you're not killing yourself from, for them anymore. Look at this. They're like, we benefited from you. We expect this from you. This is what you always gave for 10 years of your life, for three years of your life, for 16 years of your life, for six months of your life, for two years. Why now would you? Like, why now would you choose to shut this energy off? And it's because, well, strength card reversed and the three of swords i was giving too much like you're giving too much of yourself you're overextending people were abusing your light they're abusing your energy they're they were abusing your generosity so now it's and then in order to maintain that that energy you almost that same willingness to give turn into a sense of duty and obligation and what happens when I cut myself off? What, hap what happens when I cut that energy off? So the Queen of Cups and the Eight of Pentacles is actually the, the card that are suggesting that you go back to this space of balance enough so that you can enjoy what it is that you're doing, you can enjoy your life, you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Nine of Pentacles reverse here and King of Wands reverse because there's a part of you that hasn't been able to experience as much as you should have with the, the things that you've worked so hard to get for yourself, whether that be freedom, whether that be food, whether that be your home, whether that be your work. Let's look at your oracle and then I'm gonna start asking, I actually wanna ask in the extended reading for you, like what's next? Um, like, what do you have to be optimistic for? Like, what do you have to be positive, positive about? Like, remember how in the start of this reading, I was saying that I got this sense of 
like your optimism and your positivity of what you felt like you could do and what you knew that you were ready to give and what you're ready to receive and put yourself out there, it almost, your optimism almost turned into like, for too long, turned into, I can do it until I have to do this. And then it ends up, if you stay in that space too long, it kind of eats away at you. So now the extended reading is going to be about going back to that optimism, that eternal optimism, that eternal positivity that lives within you that didn't get crushed in all of this. You just needed to take a break or you needed to readjust or re switch your sails, like uh, change the sails of your ship. And I do want to say too, that spirit doesn't lie and neither do I, whatever messages that need to come through, they'll come through, but don't expect this. Oh my gosh. You know, now that I'm, I'm doing what's right for me, this, everyone's going to love it and celebrate me. There might be people who hate you because of it. You have the hermit card and the five of cups. So this means that you would have to unpack those emotional hardships that sometimes come from doing what is in your best interest. Okay. Let's look at your own cards. Wow. You got the card of striving, striving. I have to read this to you. Eventually the individual ego's drive to make things happen falls away, replaced with a relaxed, trusting openness to answers as they arise. Thank you divine for letting them, for letting me move with the flow. Put that right there. Wow. Divine timing. The divine brings things in the timing that we need. Nothing comes before we're prepared, nor leaves too early. May I always trust your perfect and holy timing, dear Lord. So I feel like for some of you guys, in the pursuit of something, you feel like you've lost something great or you lost time in this. And I just want to say that if it's not that thing that it is that you are trying to work towards, that it, it is coming, that's going to happen then it's also the timing of this message coming to you right now. Compassion, wow. As you pray each day for greater compassion, a new self is born, drawing new people and experiences. Dear Lord, help me feel ever deepening self-acceptance. May I see myself as you see me. So this is the, just compassion. And I like for you, like you giving compassion to you, but I'm also seeing that you might need to set intention at your altar that other people have compassion towards you during this time so that it kind of eases off the intensity as you pivot in the role that you have shown up and the intensity that you have shown up. The light doesn't dwindle, is what I just heard. You needn't worry, don't worry. There's no one in your life who hasn't always loved you. They're all just learning how to show it. Those big sillies, the universe. So this is showing that what you have to offer is, is genuinely great and I think also rare if you're worried that if you're giving less of yourself then someone or people won't appreciate it, the right people will. The people who do appreciate what you give and the effort and the intention and the experience and the wisdom, those things are very, very tremendously valuable, but not to the person who is trying to abuse you. People who are trying to abuse or extract more from the situation or manipulate the situation, they don't appreciate what is being given to them because their intention is to not value what is valuable. Their intention is to exploit it. So there might be this energy here where you are seeing how you have been exploited. And in that, it's not just who falls away, but how you may mourn the fact that you have fallen away from yourself in that process. Keep it simple. Oh my goodness. A lot of you guys are going back to a more simple life, a happier life, stripping it all back. And this is going to make it so that you can genuinely enjoy your circumstances, your life, your effort. Some of you guys have had these great big goals that you set for yourself and visions that, is that you set for yourself. Those are beautiful things. You've accomplished them. They're striking. They're stunning. However, um, I don't know why I'm also seeing like an offering of like coconut and lemongrass. That's so specific, but it's bringing me to like sacrifice, not, not sacrifice, but the offering that you give in order to bring that energy closer into your life. Coconut and lemongrass. Okay. Now going back into this though. Um, 
you can even cook with that too, which I have. I've made this like dish one time with coconut and lemongrass and rice. Oh my God, it's so good. Anyway, um, what was I doing here? Oh, um, you might, this, um, I, for some of you guys, it's almost giving me similar to like a lifestyle. Like if you're living a certain lifestyle, it's, it's big, it's this, it's elaborate. It might be in your best interest to scale back so that you can focus and prioritize on the things that actually matter and it, it and it makes it easier so you don't have to constantly strive to keep this going. Wow. You have the rabbit spirit. Now is a lucky time. This is a, also a very fertile card. Look at that. You have two little bunnies. Two little baby bunnies. I don't know if you see that, but there's little babies there. So cute. Okay, let me read to you the black tourmaline and then we're going to move on to the extended portion of this reading. Wow. This is the card that it is I'm reading. It's black tourmaline. And the message is connected to healthy boundaries, repelling and dispelling unwanted energies, shielding and protection, and healthy interdependence. Wow. There is a saying that good fences make good neighbors. Well-being, likewise, requires healthy boundaries that respect everyone's uniqueness, similarities, and differences. The appearance of black tourmaline spirit is a sign that now is the time to make sure those fences are neither impenetrable walls nor so porous and broken down that you start to lose track of where you end and others begin. Ooh. It's invigorating to move between alone time and together time. Maybe you need to be with some extroverts for a while, or maybe you need a long evening alone with a good book. If you've been feeling tired lately, pay attention to whether you're neglecting yourself at some level, giving too much, suffering from empathy overload, or depending too much on someone else and crowding them. You may need some downtime to remind you that you are a human being, not a human doing. You do not have to earn love through perpetual self-sacrifice, nor do you have to feel overwhelmed and needy. Healthy boundaries mean leaning on others in a balanced way, and Black Tourmaline Spirit is here to nudge you to be mindful of when you need to time to yourself and when you need to be among those who accept you as exactly as you are. That part. That, you would think that I've like selected these cards out. That is insane how much that resonates. Wow. So I'm going to leave this card here out. Now is a lucky time because I do get a strong sense here of positivity and optimism. That's going to be the message of this from the extended reading. And I'm going to keep out, you need, needn't worry and keep it simple. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the extended reading. It is linked down below for those of you guys that feel like that message is for you. And, um, but if you're leaving and this is where we say goodbye, thank you so much for listening to me and allowing me to shuffle cards for you and your energy. And I also ask that you give this video a thumbs up and, um, subscribe if you are not. And if you are subscribed, we will clearly see each other in the near future. All right, I'm moving on to the extended reading now.